we talk to IT professionals all the time. One of the questions that comes up frequently is, what's the difference between backup and high availability? Joining me from Carbonite is Lilac Schoenbeck. She is the Senior Director of Product Marketing at Carbonite. Hi, thanks Hi, for having me. Thanks for coming. So let's jump into this. We've got backup and high availability. Yeah. What are the differences? When do I use the different technologies? Sure, it's a great question. A lot of people wonder, you know, am I using one or the other or both? I think you'll see that there's plenty of use cases where you might need both, but the be it's best illustrated by understanding what the strengths of each happen to be. Let's do that. All right, so let's say you have a server in your data center. Um, let's draw a big data center. Okay. Um, Usually people take a backup of those servers typically once a day. They're using some sort of snapshot technology or something to create a copy of that server often on premise. We'll call that the backup copy, right? right? That happens usually after close of business, so let's say 6 p.m. and for the exercise, let's call it Monday at 6 p.m. Sounds good. Great. Um, oftentimes people will want a second copy somewhere safe, perhaps outside of their own data center, often in the cloud, right. an amorphous sort of wiggly thing. Yeah. Um, now, these backups are usually stored over time. There's right. a lot of good reasons to keep daily backups and monthly backups if you've lost a file, if legal comes hunting, if compliance comes hunting. So there's often sort of 30 days worth of backup and then one for October and one for November and one yeah. for December. So basically this is our historical record. Absolutely, right. which is fantastic, right? Yeah. You need it for a number of reasons on most of your systems. Yeah. Okay. So. Sometimes, though, things go horribly, horribly wrong. Right, so for example, let's say we lose that server. Right, that server goes down. How do you recover from that server? Well, it really depends what happened to that server. Right. If you somebody tripped over a power cable, it just needed to be rebooted, you can reboot the thing and then bring the backup copy from here back over here, and everything's good in, let's right. say, you've got some talented guys within the hour, yeah. right? Um, on the other hand, Sometimes bigger disasters happen. Right, Say the entire data center. a flood hits the whole data center. Sure. It hit the backup copy as much as it hit the original copy. Right. Luckily, you have a copy in the cloud. Right. Fantastic. Where do you load that copy onto? Right, because now you don't have any servers. You don't have any servers. And right. even if you had one in that closet in the back, it's probably flooded too. Exactly. Okay, right. so you're calling your favorite server vendor, placing an order, FedExing it over, yeah. it takes however long. Three days later, you're up and running again. Yeah. Hallelujah, you're up and running again. Yeah. That's the good news. But you were down for three days. You were down for three days. Right. And in the sort of industry lingo, that would be the recovery time. Right. Your recovery time from the moment you went down to the moment you went up was three days. Right. Okay, that's sometimes pushing it for a lot of businesses and a lot of systems. Now, your recovery point, you're going back to the last known copy. The last known copy was on Monday at 6 p.m. Right. So if you're up and running on Thursday, your recovery point now is probably closer to four days. Right. Yeah. Right? Sure. Okay. This, again, is fine for some set of systems. There's some systems that, let's all admit, they'll go down for a week and very few people will notice. Right. Other systems, if they go down for an hour, everybody's left their desk and they've stopped working and the whole company shut down. Right, yeah, those are the systems that if they go down, they get you fired, right? Those are the ones you've got to really be worried about. Absolutely, right. and I always sort of like to think of it in terms of how long do you sit at your desk without email working? Right. An hour? Two hours? For me, it's five minutes. Right, you yeah. just go get a cup of coffee and at right. some point you just go home. Right. On the other hand, if the HR system goes down, you'll probably keep working for a while, right. unless you're in HR. Right. <laughs> So for those critical systems, that's where I assume high availability comes in, right? Exactly. Right. So if you have a if you're doing a high availability um, type operation, what you're doing, and we can do this, the same sort of architectural structure will work. You can have a copy on premise, and then you can have a copy in the cloud. It's a very sim similar system, right? And you're still making copies, one to an on premise, one to the cloud. The, it's an issue of frequency. How often are you sending changes? Here you were sending a snapshot every day at 6 p.m. Right. With a high availability solution, you're sending things over bit by bit. So as changes happen, you're sending over bit by bit. In fact, byte by byte, not to be overly technical, technical. about it, um, you're sending over little bits. And really the analog is when we use any kind of web-based technology like a Google Doc or an email, you're not pressing save like we used to on right. Word files in you know, 1997 right. and hearing the whole thing crunch. Right. You're just seeing this sort of thing pop up at the top that says saved, saved, right. saved, right. right? Same, same. And most times it happens so fast you don't even notice it's happening. Exactly. Right. But if your browser crashes, you go back to what? You've lost two words, three words, half right. a sentence? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing here. You're basically sending things over, I'm going to call it 10 seconds. Those are not unusual numbers. Right. It's within the range. Worst case minute, 
you're still not losing a whole lot of information. Right. It's, so just it's just being the, flipped the over. the time it takes to transfer from here to there. And if this is local, obviously that's going to be very short. Maybe might be a little longer getting to the cloud. Exactly. And it also somewhat varies on the amount of change, the change rate okay. of the systems. But fundamentally, this is measured in seconds. Okay. So okay. Let's, let's go through the same scenario then. Okay. So let's say I now lose this. So how does recovery look in this picture? A absolutely. So what happens is you press a big red button. I okay. can even draw one. There look. we go. Big red button. Okay. Somebody in IT presses that big red button, and you know what that does is it basically takes out this system and kicks this one awake, right? So this one turns on. Okay. The actual workload will run on that secondary system. The time elapsed basically is down to how quickly you're pushing that button. Right. So it's really more of a matter of detection. How long did it take you to figure out this sort of thing was down? Press the button. Exactly. You'll be up within a couple minutes. Right. Now your recovery time has gone from three days to right. go buy another server and install it to a couple minutes. Right. A couple minutes very much feels like, ooh, there's a blip in the system. I don't know what happened. Ah, now it's working. Right. That's the experience of the end user. And then the only data loss, that recovery point objective, is just whatever I guess was on the wire at that moment in time? Ex you're basically looking at a few seconds from the last time that, that that update was done. Again, I lost half the sentence in my Google Doc. Same, same. Okay. Well, now, let me make it a little harder for you. Yeah. So, you know, because I don't want to let you off easy, but no. well, let's, let's say this, let's say that's fire since it's red. Let's sure. say the whole thing caught on fire. Now, what do I do? Well, so now the red button flips on the cloud workload. Ah, okay. So it's going to go running out in the cloud. Um, and again, the times are really similar. You're just booting up a VM out there. It doesn't take very long. Um, so you're, you're still looking at a recovery time of a couple minutes. Um, the only kicker in there that you're going to see a little bit, right, DNS is going to usually automatically update as a second step. Again, still minutes. The experience still comes down to an end user feeling like something might be a little bit wonky in the force. Right. And then, it's oh, up and going. it's up and running again. Yep. Nobody's left their desk. Nobody's gone away for the afternoon. Nobody has called and paged you 14 times, hoping that the business doesn't go down. And really, when you're talking about these sorts of things, you're thinking in, not just in terms of the aggravation of being on the hot seat, mm -hmm. but also how much money is lost when your business is down for three days versus five minutes. Right. So um, I, the other thing I like about this scenario here is it, it strikes me that it's also really easy to test. So if I wanted yeah. to make sure all this was going to work, it seems like pushing a red button and testing it is a lot easier than doing a full recovery, for example. Absolutely. Um, one of the nice things about these replication systems is that usually you can do a sort of non-intrusive testing. For example, you can bring up a secondary system, never take down the primary system, make sure that it's running well, do this periodically when anything has changed, for example, in the way that the applications are rigged together or in the network topology or anything. You do a quick test, make sure it's all good. And you can be very confident in pressing the button. The key to a disaster um, scenario is to feel confident in your plan. Like it would be if you were a firefighter, you're confident in the right. steps you take. The key is to make sure that you are very comfortable with the way that this whole thing goes down so that in a flood, in an emergency, in even a localized emergency where one or two systems are going awry, you can press the button, rest easy, and IT can fix everything that they need to fix on the back end in relative peace. Well, that's awesome. So, and then obviously the the backup doesn't go away. We still use that for our historical copies. Right? Absolutely, this is not the best technology for keeping historical copies. Okay. Um, this is a far better technology. And so, what we typically see people doing is bucketing their workloads into, you know, critical systems and let's say less critical systems. Right. Sort of a tiering approach. Sure. Critical systems often are protected both with an availability solution and a backup solution. Right. And then a less critical system might just be protected with something, understanding that two days of downtime isn't going to break anyone. Got it. Okay. Well, great. Hey, thanks for joining us. So before we get out of here, though, tell us a little bit about Carbonite. Sure. Um, Carbonite actually has a real complete portfolio for data protection. So we have um, both our eVault solutions, which rest a little bit more on this side of the spectrum, and our double take solutions, which rest on this side of the spectrum. Carbonite eVault and Carbonite double take work well together in these sort of joint environments um, where people will want a little bit of this and a little bit of that coming together to create a complete data protection plan. Um, the other thing that's very nice about the way we approach this technology is that we look at any kind of source environment. So I drew this as though it's a, almost a physical system on premise. We support physical, we support virtual, we support even cloud-based systems. Okay and we we'll, are able to do backups and replication of all of them. And so it's a sort of any-to-any -any environment, um, which actually is good because you can imagine in a disaster, you don't want to be working with five different vendors depending on what the source right. and the target is. Yeah, keeping is. it down, it makes a lot big difference. Exactly. Okay, great. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.